Yeah. So, uh, and then we'll end with uh, about what can you do uh, as an individual to protect our species. So uh, it's going to be, uh, uh, the, 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 the presentation will be available to you after today's talk. So don't worry about copying anything. Uh, there will be species name there, Chinese name. So if you want to learn more, you can Google it. So a little bit about myself, I'm Benita. I am a marine biologist by training. Uh, my first two degrees are both in biology. Uh, I'm also a passionate scuba diving instructor. Uh, I've been teaching diving for over 20 years. I teach a lot of uh, students, uh, whether they are kids or disabled. Uh, if you want to learn more about my diving, you're welcome to come to my website. Uh, but here at Encompass, uh, what we do here is uh, we are a social enterprise. Uh, so we do different events uh, to support the community. So for example, if we do a coffee on sustainable coffee, we'll donate part of our proceeds to a neighboring um, partnering NGO uh, for them. Uh, we create a lot of experiential learning program and our mission is to promote uh, the achievement of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So what are the SDGs? So uh, I don't know how many of you have heard of them. So there are 17 goals that are developed by the United Nations in 2015. Uh, they include 169 specific targets to be achieved by 2030. So today we are going to mostly look at SDG 14, life below water, but it's very closely linked to, for example, climate action on life on land. So these uh, SDG goals are all related. And at Encompass, uh, we do different workshops. Uh, so as I said, we have a lot of experiential learning workshops. Uh, we have programs from sustainable coffee to making your own toothpaste. We have climate change program. And we have both, uh, we have both public programs and we also have a lot of uh, uh, private and corporate clients as well. So uh, welcome to our website to learn more. Uh, if you want to, after this talk, you're interested. So I'm going to start with Biodiversity. Uh, what's the definition? Uh, and and you're welcome to put it in your in, in your chat if 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 you uh, want to try this answer. I don't know what does biodiversity mean for you when when you think about this. What do we mean? So anybody want to try? It's not that easy actually. It's not a very straightforward answer. So. Um, Biodiversity uh, means three things. Uh, it means the genetic diversity. Uh, for example, within the species, if they are really diverse enough, it also means species diversity, which is number of species there, which is like uh, what we usually think of when we talk about uh, species. And it also talk about ecosystem diversity. Do they, is there a different habitat where uh, animals can, 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 uh, can live? So in Hong Kong, this is a snapshot. Uh, this is from the AFCD. Uh, so we have over a thousand uh, number of marine fishes. We also have marine animals like Chinese white dolphin, you might know. We also have a number of soft coral and gorgonian. We have 84 species of hard corals, and then we have fish and all, uh, all that. So we are quite not bad in Hong Kong. So another uh, case in point is Hong Kong. We only have 0.3% uh, uh, of all the marine area in China, but we actually have uh, over 26% of the species that are recorded in China. So this is just showing you how diverse we are as a habitat. And we are actually comparable to Caribbean Sea. So for example, in Caribbean, there's 64 species of coral. In Hong Kong, we have 84 species of hard coral. So in terms of coral, we are actually better in Caribbean. So uh, even though Hong Kong is just a small area, we are actually not bad. So uh, there's always a lot of people asking me whether it's good to dive in Hong Kong. So my answer is Hong Kong doesn't have the perfect visibility. It's not Bali, it's not Indonesia, it's not Kota Kinabalu, but we do have some stuff to see. And today I will sh share with you what, what, what those are. Uh, anybody's joining? Not yet. Okay. So, oops. So uh, as I said, Hong Kong have 84 species of uh, uh, hard coral. These are just numbers here. Don't worry about it. You have this slide, but just this, I just want to show you like the sheer number of uh, 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 species we have. And we are discovering new species every year. So uh, for example, last year, I think there was a study on reef fishes. There were three new reef fishes uh, that were found in Hong Kong. So these numbers are keep rising. So in Hong Kong, uh, we have some species that are named after Hong Kong. So for example, Hong Kong grouper, uh, for those of you who enjoy seafood, you might have come across in, this, in the seafood restaurant. We also have this uh, two walkie shores animal. So in Hong Kong, we have different marine habitat. So today I'm go to, uh, going to mostly focus on uh, uh, the species that we have found in the coral bed. 
uh, in the uh, rocky reef, which is uh, most diverse. Uh, I'm going to push, put less, less emphasis on the species in rocky shore. So just because of the interest of time. Uh, so maybe if I do another t talk, I will focus on that. But just to let you know, uh, this is not, not by no means comprehensive uh, for Hong Kong. So where can we find the animals? Uh, so uh, the Chinese white dolphin, uh, which a lot of various anemotic species are on the western part of the uh, 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 shore. The coral is usually on the eastern side. And here, this green side is the uh, someone, it's the special scientific site where the green, uh, green turtle uh, uh, um, uh, um, breed. And then we have some horseshoe crab in Lantau Island. And I will tell you in a bit, uh, why do they live there and what challenges they face. So uh, this is another diagram, as I said, the dolphins on the west side, horseshoe crab in here and here as well, uh, the uh, uh, sea turtle, and then we have a lot of corals and in the total harbor is also good with fish. So first question, and I hope all of you can participate. Do you know what is the total marine area in Hong Kong? And you can type the answer in the chat box. So anybody want to try? And if I give you some incentive, those who answer answer most correctly today will, will get a special prize for me. You will have a discount. Yeah. So let's see what's the, what, what, what do you think? Okay, the answer is actually 1,600. We have quite a bit of a, uh, marine area in, in Hong Kong, and uh, what are those marine area used for? So this is another question. So I will give you a tip. Uh, just, just now I show you a video of Hoi Ha, and he said there's certain number of marine parks in Hong Kong. That is an old video two years ago, it's no longer, uh, no longer uh, 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 updated. In, we have a new marine park in Hong Kong just two months ago. So can you guess how many marine parks are in Hong Kong? Anybody else want to guess other than Chim, Chim Lo? Okay, we have very different answers. Okay, the answers is six. So the, these three marine parks, Nian Chau Tong, Tong Ping Chau, and Hoi Ha Wan, uh, they are very good for coral diversity. So the number one coral diversity is in Tong Ping Chau. It has almost all of the 84 corals in Hong Kong. Hoi Ha Wan is the second, it has 64. And this three on the left hand side is for the Chinese white dolphin. And the Southwest Lantau Marine Park is the newest marine park. And here in Cape Diaglara is uh, uh, a marine reserve, not a marine park, it's protected for its uh, rocky reefs. So most of the coral we find in Hong Kong are on the eastern, northeastern side. Uh, anybody know why? Or anybody want to guess why that most of our corals are on the eastern side? Anyone want to guess why we only have corals on the eastern side and not the western side? Nutrient rich water currents, okay. Nuclear plant, plant, okay. Okay, was it ocean? Okay. The answer is this the answer is, uh, I think Sharon is correct. The answer is because we have nutrient rich current uh, from the left hand side uh, from the Pearl Delta. So that means the salinity is lower there. Uh, so it's not ideal for, uh, for, for coral and it's also very turbid. So that's why most of the coral, coral we find is on the right hand side. So Hong Kong is in the tropical, uh, subtropical area. Uh, uh, we have uh, the influence of uh, both. Uh, the current uh, from the north, we have the Taiwan and the Corocial current, which is a winter monsoon current. And then we have summer current from Hainan uh, uh, Island. So because of the monsoon current, our, uh, our, even though we have a winter, the water is not too cold. So that's why actually in the, in the winter in Hong Kong, you find quite many uh, baby reef fishes that are, rush, that are being brought by the uh, Corocial and Taiwan current. So, that's why uh, Hong Kong, we have such diversity because of the mixing of the monsoon current. And if you look at the temperature, uh, we, our water temperature vary from 14 degrees to 31 degrees uh, uh, in the summer. And we also have lower summer salinity due to the runoff uh, from the Pearl River Delta. So this is uh, uh, just a little bit of background before we draw, uh, talk about biodiversity. 
So in Hong Kong, uh, we used to have a, a very healthy food web. Uh, uh, we have more uh, uh, sharks were very common uh, in the 70s and the 50s. And what happened is there was overfishing uh, uh, and a lot of overdredging and our uh, corals are not as soon as, as good as, as before. But I have to say, because I think uh, of the fishing ban and uh, maybe this year also because of COVID, I have seen uh, better biodiversity and better visibility just this year. Uh, this is a picture from my friend John Fortune. He is a very famous diver in Hong Kong. Uh, this is his picture in the 70s. As you can see, uh, the grouper he was, he, 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 was, he was catching was massive. In Hong Kong, it's very hard to find fish that are that big now because they are being overfished. And as I said, uh, these are some of the uh, problems, some of the uh, pressures uh, that the Hong Kong uh, oceans face. So now uh, let's go to the meat of the presentation, which is the uh, marine biodiversity. So uh, I'm not going to be very scientific about today because it's going to be an intro class, but I do want to introduce there's this, uh, we call it phylogenetic tree. So all the animals uh, from fungi to protozoa, then it become cnidarian, then uh, uh, it, uh, it get more and more complex. We have echinoderm, then finally we have fish and mammals and all that. So we're not going to go talk in depth, but this is just to give an overview of where these animals come from. So I'm going to start actually with the most sexy stuff for us. Oh no, not the sexy stuff, but, uh, but the, but the, but the le less sexy stuff. Uh, so we're going to talk with uh, uh, eel grass as well. So they don't look very, they don't look very, uh, very important. They just look like a piece of grass, but they are actually very important because they stabilize uh, the coastline and sediment. Uh, they are also a feeding ground for a lot of uh, small fishes. Uh, this dwarf eel grass is the only type of sea seagrass in Hong, uh, Hong Kong that are able to pollinate underwater. So you do see them quite a bit. Uh, this is brown seaweed. They are not seagrass. Uh, they are called ma'ame chou in Chinese and they are very pretty. Uh, they go rapidly in the winter months. Uh, this is uh, one of my friends who is diving uh, in, in this uh, very nice uh, sarcasm bed. Uh, they are not actually a uh, 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 true plant because they don't have uh, leaves, stems, and roots. Uh, they're just uh, very, very temporary. Okay, and now the big stuff. So in Hong Kong, we have sightings of uh, uh, whale sharks. So this was two years ago. Uh, uh, we And I think just a, a few months ago, somebody spotted that near Lama Island as well, a whale shark. And we also have tiger shark. So this was just... Uh, Two, uh, uh, two months ago in June, that, uh, that uh, a swimmer was sawing uh, like a tiger shark near her, her, um, uh, her face. And similarly, uh, yes, this was tiger in Park Sawan. So we do have very big stuff in Hong Kong. And if you wonder how many sharks we find in Hong Kong in total, there you go. These are all the sharks in Hong Kong. And I must say some are more popular. Uh, more more uh, common, like the black tip fish shark is pretty common uh, 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 in Hong Kong shallow waters. You find them in the day. Uh, this is bamboo shark. They are common at night. I have seen quite a many of them when I go night dive. Uh, so the sharks are not as uh, this uh, uh, a harmless shark. Uh, they won't attack people. Actually, um, uh, so uh, actually, it's not that hard to see them in Hong Kong. We also have rays in Hong Kong. Uh, these are very pretty rays. Uh, this one, uh, blue spotted stingray, is very common in the shallow water. Uh, and they are just very pretty to watch. And they are like, some, some of them are expect, expect, expect as a table. We also have big stuff like barracuda. Uh, they come in a school of them. Uh, not exactly very common, but they do live in Hong Kong waters. And some people do fish them. And Chinese white dolphin. I think a lot of people in Hong Kong uh, heard of them. Uh, and, and, and I don't know if you know why they are pink. And the reason is because they're actually white. Uh, uh, but when they come to the surface, because uh, the skin is very thin, uh, so the blood dilates, so they look pink. Uh, they are very, uh, They are just actually uh, discovered just like 20 years ago when they built the uh, 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 new airport. But now they have become uh, very endangered. So from 188 species uh, numbers where we first discovered them, it has dropped to 32. And I think the number is even lower this year. Uh, this year, there has been several news that there are dead dolphins found in the beach. 
So uh, because of all the reclamation, uh, all the building in the, in the western part of Hong Kong is really not helpful for this Chinese white dolphin. We also have turtles in Hong Kong. So uh, we have loggerhead leatherback. And this was just in May this year. There was a, a, a rare leatherback turtle find near Sai Kong. So we do have quite a bit of turtles in Hong Kong. And the most common one is green turtle. Uh, they are also endangered. Uh, a lot of them got trapped by uh, plastic as well. Uh, in Hong Kong, we are the remaining few sites in Southern China Sea where they breed. Uh, and they're also not nesting every year. So we are really worried about uh, their population. But if you are really interested to see them, uh, maybe in a certain month, uh, you can go and find them in the someone. But uh, just remember them, uh, try not to disturb their habitat too much. Uh, this is another diagram I'm going to show you. Uh, this is a temperature dependent sex graph. So the green uh, turtle at a lower temperature, they all of them are male and above a certain temperature, all of them are female. And the point of this is because of climate change and we know Hong Kong just had the hottest July on record, uh, then it means all more and more turtles will be female. And that's not a good thing because if you have only females and not enough males, that means the sex ratio is not, uh, it's not, it's, it's not, uh, it's not an ideal ratio for them to mate. That means less and less green turtle. So yes, climate change is uh, affecting uh, Hong Kong biodiversity uh, quite, 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 quite a bit. And now we have horseshoe crab. Uh, horseshoe crab is one of my favorite species. They are called crabs, but they're actually not crabs. Uh, they are actually relative of spider and scorpion. Uh, they are actually more than uh, 300 million years. They're as old as the, the dinosaurs. Uh, they have disappeared since the 1980s, uh, but have recently been found in some areas. However, there's a lot of threats uh, uh, about their habitat. And uh, in the later part of, this, uh, of the presentation, I will show you where, where they're really being disturbed. So horseshoe crab, just one fun fact, they have a lot of, uh, they have 10 eyes. They have 10 eyes in there, they have very good vision. Uh, so, and, and they are very smart animals. So it's, it's unfortunately, people, uh, they, we call them milking. They were milking them for the, uh, uh, for, 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 for the blood. And the blood is blue in color because uh, not like us, where we have hemoglobin, where our blood is made of iron, their blood is made of cyanide. So cyanide is blue in color, and they are supposed to have uh, 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 medical fatty from the butt, which means uh, a lot of people are harvesting them. Uh, and also the Chinese people also cook them as well. So in Hong Kong, in the last 20 years, the horseshoe crab population has decreased 90%. So this is just to show you how serious uh, that they are being threatened. Uh, yes, again, uh, some people kill horseshoe crab for good karma. They think that uh, that will bring them luck, and it's really not a good thing. Uh, there is one good news. Uh, the professor uh, uh, Yim in City U, he is a, a he's a he's an expert in the horseshoe crab, and he uh, breeds this uh, baby horseshoe crab in his lab, and until they are uh, they are a bit older, like a uh, uh, size of the, uh, his palm, and then they release it to the wild, hoping then that will recover their uh, population a, a little bit. So there are very good people in Hong Kong trying to to do conservation work to help rescue these animals. Uh, now I will talk a little bit about coral reef species. Uh, this is a diagram from Hoi Ha Wan. Uh, so as I said, uh, Hoi Ha Wan is the second most uh, 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 places with the highest biodiversity other than Dong Peng Zhou. So you can see all these animals just by snorkeling. And if you haven't been, I really encourage you to. Uh, you can also join one of our tours in Encompass where we go there pretty frequently and we'll tell you what all these animals are. So uh, yes, uh, we talk about that. Hong Kong have more than a thousand species of marine uh, fishes and for reef fishes. So not all marine fishes are reef fishes. Some of them are just ocean fish. Reef fishes, we have around uh, 350 species. So these are some common uh, reef fishes. Uh, you might see them in like Finding Nemo, Finding Dory. Very like, this is like kind of like a Dory kind of fish. They are quite common, and as I said, uh, th their babies are quite common in the winter because of the of of, of the current. Uh, yes, so these beautiful fishes can be seen in snorkeling or diving in Hong Kong. The grouper, uh, Hong Kong grouper, is an endangered species. They take a long time to reach maturity. Uh, they are also prone to overfishing. 
uh, yes. Uh, so they are, uh, they they are often being caught even before they are making a big size. So again, uh, this is kind of like the um, total, but this is now uh, de they are determined by the size, the sex ratio. So uh, when the um, group go bigger, they become a male. When they're smaller, they become female. But the problem is when they're being half uh, being fish or or when they're smaller then not enough fish become male to mate so this is another problem of uh, overfishing okay this is one of my favorite fish i don't know if any of you have seen it so questions do you think that this fish on the bottom which is a common species of uh, anemone fish in hong kong are they the same fish as the dory upstairs so yes or no anybody want to guess is the fish down here the same fish as the fish up here? So it's either yes or no. Anybody want to guess? Okay, we have some different answers. The answer is this fish, anemone fish, is different from the one in the top. This one is called Clarkia anemone fish. Uh, this this one is the common anemone fish, and the difference. This one is all over Hong Kong. Okay, is like you almost see them in any, every dive. They are very aggressive and territorial. So when you go near them, they will give you like a small bite like this in that. Uh, and they also give you a warning sign when they want to attack you. So yes, uh, uh, very common uh, an fish in Hong Kong. Uh, these are some eels in Hong Kong. Uh, they are quite common. Uh, they're usually under the rock. Uh, they don't attack you if you don't attack them and they're very beautiful to watch. Okay, these are some strange looking fish. So I like puffer fish and box fish. They are in the same uh, family, uh, strange looking uh, a shape. This is a fowl fish, which kind of look like a, a, a towel. And then we have trumpet fish. All these are also common in Hong Kong. So you might be amazed how many things you can see in Hong Kong. This is a flying gunner. Uh, it's called flying because it has this uh, like a fin that looks like a wing, uh, which like glide under the ocean. Uh, 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 this is very common at night dive. You will see them as well. Uh, some people do fish them as well. This is seahorse. Uh, you might, okay, seahorse is not that common in Hong Kong. I, I, I would say maybe every 20 dives I see one, but they do exist in Hong Kong. And just like what you understand with seahorse is mostly the male which will carry the babies. Okay, this are hazardous fish. These are fish you don't want to touch. So we have a scorpion fish. We have stonefish, we have lionfish, uh, yes, and they are poisonous and the general rule of thumb is if you don't know what that thing is, don't, don't touch them. They can give you very painful uh, feeling. Okay, now we're gonna talk about invertebrates. So I am an invertebrate person. I'm, I, I, I'm okay with fish, but it's not my favorite. So uh, we'll start with porifera. Porifera are sponges in Hong uh, uh, sponges. So they are very simple in structure. They are filter feeders. Uh, they can uh, 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 vary in form and sizes. They come in all sorts of colors. So you can see this is all very colorful. Uh, sometimes some people mistake them as coral, but coral actually, if you look closely, uh, usually they pull up like the little circle thing. It's more regular shape. Sponge is more irregular. So that's how you tell them apart. So now I'm going to talk about cnidarian. Uh, so cnidarian is my favorite phylum. So it have coral, it have jellyfish and all that. So uh, in Hong Kong, uh, we have hard corals. Uh, they're usually in shallow water. So in Hong Kong, when we go diving, uh, it's usually no more than eight meters because beyond that, you really don't see much things. Uh, there are more soft coral communities in deeper and more exposed areas. So uh, corals in Hong Kong, uh, in other parts of the world, you see a lot more branching corals uh, because there's more wave. In Hong Kong, we don't have that much uh, wave. So most of the cor coral we see are either ma massive, encrusting or meandering. So this is uh, 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 one of the uh, common uh, corals in Hong Kong. It's called lettuce coral. And you can see the shape is like a lettuce. There's a lot of spaces uh, in this coral where uh, the, the, the fish can, uh, uh, can take a rest uh, and uh, very common when you go uh, snorkeling in Hoi Ha or Tong Ping Chau. Another uh, coral called Fefatis, uh, sometimes it's called uh, a brain or pineapple coral. Uh, 
uh, they are submissive, uh, large collide share walls, uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, uh, also uh, very common. This is black coral. Uh, you might ask, it doesn't look black, it looks kind of white, right? So the reason is because uh, black coral is only the skeleton part is uh, black. Uh, actually, their polyps are white, that's why they look white outside. They're coniferous, uh, so uh, different from uh, this, uh, the, the Phrephites or the profana coral. Uh, most of the hard coral in Hong Kong, uh, they are symbiotic with algae. Uh, so the color of the brown color, uh, this coral come from is from the symbiotic algae, which photosynthesize. So um, the coral depending on that photosynthesis for food, and they do also fit at night, but it's not entirely coniferous. Whereas the black coral, which they are in the deeper water because they don't have as much sunshine, they are um, almost all coniferous. Okay, and then we have sea anemone. Uh, these are the two common type. And uh, this type is very common, uh, and they are the home of this cochlear anemone fish, which I talked about just now. We have jellyfish, and I just want to show you this really cool video, which I took uh, just two weeks ago when I'm in Hoi Ha. So uh, again, this is uh, very common in Hong Kong, and uh, I hope you got to see one of them if you go uh, snorkeling in Hong Kong. Oops, sorry. Okay, we do have very large uh, uh, jellyfish. So uh, this is a lion's mane jellyfish. It's as big, you can see, as, as big as a, as a human. Uh, they are highly toxic. Uh, so yeah, this person is not very smart to swim so near them. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't say they are very common in Hong Kong. So the other common, the other uh, video I show you that uh, that uh, spotted jellyfish is much more common. Okay, and then this is a uh, difficult word to pronounce. It's called platyhelmus. Uh, it's a flatworm. So flatworm looks like this. It's flat and it's very pretty. Uh, they are very uh, common uh, to see uh, uh, around Hong Kong and Indo-Pacific. They feed on tunicates and crustacean and they sometimes swim as well. Okay, and then we have annelids. Um, annelids are segmented worm. Uh, they are rounded, so not like flatworm. Flatworm is flat. Annelids are more rounded and they have segments. So uh, for example, this is called a spiral branchus tetra. Ceros is a, is a, is a, is a, uh, is also called a cocoa worm. They are close relative of the Christmas tree worm. Uh, they have two uh, very colorful tentacles and they're often fine as a group. So uh, they don't look worm, I know. Uh, they look like kind of like jellyfish or I don't know, upside down, but they are worms. So the, their, their body is uh, buried deep inside this coral. Uh, this is the cocoa worm. Uh, there's a uh, uh, two pinkish uh, spiral tentacle crown, and this is sol sol solitary. So uh, it's different from this one. This one, the very colorful one, they're usually fine as a group, but this one is solitary. Okay. Uh, okay, this is Bristol worm. Uh, this is very, uh, very uh, 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 dangerous. They're also known as fireworm, so do not touch them. If you touch them, you end up like this guy, have a really bad scars. Uh, they usually farm in the uh, uh, bottom of the sea, but occasionally they find uh, swimming in the water bottle. So all these bristles, if you got biting them, I think it's as painful as the lionfish. Okay, mollus. Uh, there's a lot of things you can eat here. I think some of you can recognize this. So uh, we start with sea snail. So we have something called a kawi. They are very nice, uh, uh, fin shape. And this is a soft coral kawi, uh, again, very colorful. And then we have tiger conch, uh, which is kind of like having this small eyes near the near, near its shell. This is cone snail. Uh, you don't want to mess with this. They are also very dangerous. They can kill an adult in four minutes. So if you recognize some shell like this, do not go near them. Uh, they don't. They don't want to attack you, they want to attack fish, but if you harass them, they might. So uh, yeah, just some hazardous animal you want to be aware of. This is sea slugs, uh, one of my favorite as well. I think they're very photogenic. Uh, they are like, like kind of a, a snail without the shell. So they come in all sorts of shapes and color. And you can see like this two antennae and like a little thing here. Uh, yes. Uh, not exactly the easiest to find. They're usually just like, like, like the size of a finger tip. So you need to have very good eyes to find this. 
But if you cannot find this, you can find the relative. Oh, uh, one more, one more slide. Uh, this is an egg mass of a sea, sea, sea slug. Uh, so it doesn't, if you see that in the ocean, you might not recognize what it is, but it is an egg mass. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is a nudibranch egg mass. Okay, and if uh, uh, nudibranch is too small to see, you can see sea hair. They are much bigger. They are the size of your hand. Uh, they are less colorful. They're usually greenish or brownish in color. Uh, in Chinese, we call them hoi tou, like a sea rabbit. Okay, and then here are some things you can eat. Uh, this is Asian green mussel. Uh, quite a bit of a ladies, they usually take this and they go, go home and eat. This is a pen shell. Uh, Zhongwen, uh, Chinese we call it sa tap. So they are like a pen that like stick in the ocean. Again, they're quite tasty, but they are more endangered in the green mussel. So if you are going to eat something, I would recommend green mussel and not pen shell. Uh, because pen shell, they are much harder to grow. So uh, I would recommend green mussel. And then we also have some scallop as well in Hong Kong. Uh, octopus. Octopus is common in Hong Kong. Uh, uh, some of the uh, octopus you see in the market may be from the Hong Kong Ocean, but you do not want to touch this octopus. The blue ring octopus is extremely dangerous and poisonous as well. Uh, it's not very common, but they do exist. So if you see any octopus with blue ring, please stay away from it. Uh, this is a cuttlefish. Uh, this is my friend uh, Job Ku on the left. He is holding a very big cuttlefish, and the difference between cuttlefish and squid is cuttlefish have a cuttle bone, so they are much uh, thicker uh, and heavier. And then we have squid, and if you see this on the on uh, on the bottom, this is a, a squid egg in the bottom of the ocean, uh, so they uh, look like white bubbles. Okay, and then echinoderm. Uh, echinoderm are things with uh, with with a uh, 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 hard exoskeleton. So uh, this one is common. I mean, uh, I, I know a lot of people think of sea cucumber as like black, really boring things, but they actually come in all sorts of color. And uh, I'm personally quite passionate about sea cucumber. Uh, my master is on the genetics of sea cucumber in Indonesia. Uh, I think they're fascinating. So this uh, one on the right, the sea apple is a picture I took in Hong Kong. Uh, so these tentacles, they do the feeding. But if you mess with sea cucumber, they will mess with you as well. So it's not entirely, Actually poisonous, but they do eject this uh, really sticky uh, 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 thread uh, called a, 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 a cuvierin tubules. So they're really sticky, and uh, these are the digestive organs. If you mess with them, they will stick with you, and you're just a pain to get them off. It's not going to kill you, but it's very, very annoying. Uh, and then we have sea urchins in Hong Kong, and many people ask me, "Can you eat the sea urchin in Hong Kong?" My answer is yes, you can eat them, but they're not very tasty. So I'm not, I would not recommend you go and hunt for sea urchin. There are certain things you can hunt, which I will tell you uh, is tasty, but I, I don't think sea urchin, you should, you should mess with them. Uh, so uh, on the left is a decorated urchin, and on the right is a long spine sea urchin, which is also pretty common. Uh, we have starfish. Uh, starfish are quite common in Hong Kong. Uh, they are not only five arms, some of them are eight arms, some of them are 12 arms, depending on the species. Brittle stars. Uh, so they are not sea star. Uh, they might look like sea star with five arms, but their arms are extremely brittle and you can uh, come, come off with it. Uh, they are detritus feeder, meaning they eat uh, 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 just uh, leftover food in, in the ocean. Whereas sea star, they are, some of them are carnivorous, they eat small animals. Uh, they are nocturnal, so in the, wind, uh, in the nighttime, they are very common in the oceans. This is a feather star, uh, very pretty, uh, very common at the nighttime, and it's very, it's very uh, amazing. They actually, the whole thing can come up and actually swim in the water, uh, and they are host to many animals uh, in Hong Kong. They're not extremely common, but they do exist. Okay, now we have another group that are with many food. Uh, you can see the crayfish, the crabs, and all that. So Chinese spiny lobster, they are endemic in Hong Kong water, meaning they are only found in Hong Kong water and not elsewhere. Uh, they are very common in the fall, uh, September, October, uh, under the, the rocks, many people go and fish them. Uh, and my advice is uh, only fish for, uh, for the bigger size uh, and allow the smaller one to go. 
just a different crepes. Uh, this one is very tasty. So if you are going to fit, eat something, I would recommend this. Uh, Blue Sermon crepe, they are common in Hong Kong. Uh, spotted boss crepe, less common. Decorated Hong Kong crepe is too small for eat. But <clears throat> as you can see, there's a range of crepes you can find in Hong Kong. We have shrimps. Uh, we have the shrimps that are big enough for eating. These two are small. These two are very good for photo thinking. Uh, they're usually uh, fine in the uh, uh, bottom of a rock. This is a hinge back shrimp. This is a banded coral shrimp. Uh, their body is transparent, very pretty. And here's another one. This is an anemone shrimp uh, called Periclamenes. Uh, they are fine in the uh, uh, an anemone, uh, the one with, with the uh, tart anemone fish. Very, very common. Uh, almost every anemone you find, you will find like two or three of these guys. Okay, and then we have Caudata. We are coming to the end. So uh, they are not exactly vertebrates yet, but uh, they have a, 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 a pseudo backbone. So they have one big and one small opening. Uh, they are closely related to the vertebrates, uh, meaning uh, they have some sort of backbone in the uh, called a notochord in the larval stage. They are easy to confuse with sponge, but sponge have, on, have many holes. These have two holes only, so uh, it's not that hard to tell them apart. Uh, we didn't touch in detail, but uh, just so you know, we also have different mango species in Hong Kong. So we have the muskipper, uh, fiddler crab, and all that. And uh, uh, I would say one of the best uh, 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 mangrove in Hong Kong is in Hoi Ha. Uh, if you want to go check it out, uh, or in uh, Lai Chi Wall, there's also a very good mangrove where you can see these animals. We have rock crystal species. So uh, today I, I went to a Green Egg Island for my own excursion. I find tons of chitons. Uh, they are prehistoric animals, just like the horseshoe crab as well. And you see all these uh, limpets uh, as well. Uh, just be careful if you go to Waukee Shore, they're usually very slippery. Uh, just wear really good shoes to go there. So uh, yes, uh, so at the last part of the presentation, I will tell you a little bit how we might uh, preserve this uh, biodiversity. So in Hong Kong, uh, we have something called the BSEP, uh, the uh, Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan. So this is something what the government is doing uh, to bring different stakeholders together to make policy change. But I think uh, today uh, we'll focus on what the individual can do. So what the individual can do, uh, you might know some of this already, uh, use fewer plastic products, uh, clean the beach, use eco-friendly products. So for example, if you are going diving or snorkeling, use reef safe sunscreen, meaning those would not harm the animals. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit more specific things what you can do beyond this. So for example, if you haven't heard of it, there's a, a activity called the pogging, which is uh, jogging and picking up garbage. Uh, uh, Eco Marine and Encompass, we sometimes organize this. So if you want to uh, go to a beach and help for cleanup, uh, please message one of us. Uh, this is also one of my favorite diagram. Uh, it's also available in the WWF website. So it tells you which uh, type of uh, seafood is more sustainable. So for example, a lot of groupers, a lot of the big fish we are talking about is uh, you should avoid them. Some of the uh, uh, fish like the codfish or the sea bass, those are being farmed, uh, uh, you, uh, it's more recommended. So if you are not sure what fish you should order in the restaurant, try to get um, uh, this diagram and ask the waiter what they're serving you. So Soi Wan, I do want to mention this. Uh, Soi Wan has been promoted by the Hong Kong Tourism Board as a clam digging place. Uh, I really recommend, not recommend it. Uh, uh, the Sapa, which is the clams, has been almost completely wiped out because there are just tons of tourists. Like uh, uh, my friend was telling me over one weekend, there were over a thousand tourists in Soi Hao. And um, this is also where the horseshoe crab live. So it's also disturbing the habitat. So, uh, there's certain group like the WWF, they recommend that uh, you only uh, eat certain size of the crab, of, of, of the clam, and if they, are, if they are too small, you put it back. Uh, my advice is not to get any clams at all. I think if you get any clams, it's just going to disturb the habitat and it's going to endanger them. So my advice is not to do this clam taking thing anymore. So as you can see, these are some uh, clam gauge that the WWF is doing. 
Uh, again, uh, report eco vandalism. So, for example, this is a picture I took in Hoi Ha Wan. Uh, there are uh, 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 some people who are not uh, ignoring the marine park rule and they'll just take whatever they have in the ocean. So, you can see this guy is getting a sea star away. He's probably making some Chinese medicine soup. Uh, so, if you see something like that, report to the authority and try to uh, minimize that. Uh, you can also record your observation as a citizen scientist. Uh, uh, so uh, if, you, uh, if you haven't downloaded this app, this app is both for land and marine species. Uh, you can record what you see in there, put a picture there, and somebody will help ID you, will record a time and location, and you will help uh, the scientists uh, uh, to know more about these animals. Uh, this is some way uh, uh, the iNaturalist can help. And if you're, like a, if you're like a school teacher or you work in an NGO or community, uh, there's a competition called the Ch uh, City Nature Challenge every year where uh, in April, where people uh, will compete and find the most number of species or the most observation. Uh, and it's a fantastic way for people to learn more about biodiversity. Uh, if you want to learn more about the animals, uh, the Chinese and English name, the hepatite, you can go to this website called the Hong Kong BIS. Uh, just type the common name or scientific name and they will show you a picture on where they are. I think learning and awareness is the first, type, uh, first part uh, for you to better learn about these animals. Uh, if you are a diver, in uh, every, every uh, October and November, there's something called the Hong Kong Reef Check. You can join and uh, they, will, uh, 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 it, they will do coral recording, fish recording. So uh, it's a way for citizens, for normal, uh, uh, regular citizens to help to uh, learn more about the um, biodiversity. Uh, and uh, so the AFCD each year uh, published a survey of these results. Uh, and if you're interested to know more, this is also available in the WWF. There's a map of everything, uh, different biodiversity you can find in Hong Kong. And if you want to uh, join one of the NGOs or learn more about the oceans, uh, these are some of the uh, uh, NGOs uh, you can get in touch with. So for some of the WWF has done some uh, very good work with dolphins and horseshoe crabs and all that. And don't worry about copying this, you will have this site. Uh, so just to know if you want to learn more about the animals, you can go to these websites. And uh, these are some really good documentaries on the Hong Kong biodiversity as well. And if you like us, if you like Encompass, if you will consider to support us, uh, so we're doing this for free. If you want to support us, uh, please uh, uh, donate to us at one of this method. And yes, uh, I think I'm on time. We still have 15 minutes. Uh, so. Yes, uh, maybe now is the time uh, uh, you can ask some questions. Yes, uh, so Alexand Alejandra was asking uh, which fish are advisable to eat. So uh, like uh, what I said in the, uh, the presentation, uh, let me show you again. So I think this is a good slide. Uh, I, I will share with you this, uh, this presentation there. Uh, uh, later, so these are the recommendable. Uh, what sea snakes are there in Hong Kong? Uh, yes, there are one or two species of sea snakes. I don't exactly re remember what are them, uh, but I would say they are not common in Hong Kong. The eels are common. Uh, sea snakes are not that common. Yeah. Any other questions? What is your view on the dolphin who come to live with deep water bay earlier this year? Uh, I, 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 think the, I, I've, I, I think because of the habitat destruction that the dolphins are losing their habitat. Uh, so they're just going anywhere they can find. Uh, so it's definitely not normal that they are going out of their usual range. But I think that is happening with a lot of different species. Uh, and, and if you are interested, uh, I'm doing a, a talk uh, later on this, uh, this year, uh, later this month. Let me show you. Yep, so uh, we'll be doing a talk on uh, climate change and Hong Kong biodiversity. Uh, so uh, the dolphin is not exactly climate change, but I think it's more habitat destruction. But if you want to learn more about animals, and why some of them might go to different areas. Uh, yeah, this talk will uh, address that.
let me unmute you guys. Uh, I will send you the PowerPoint after uh, today, so don't worry, I'll send to you by email uh, and also the recording as well. So, any questions? Uh, sorry, I know I go very fast, but I just want to make sure I go through all the content. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's by no means uh, a full comprehensive of what else die in Hong Kong, but I hope to show with you some uh, Species, uh, are there any organizations or is government doing something to find a pine dolphins a new room? Uh, I think the Hong Kong dolphin, this one, the Hong Kong Dolphin Society, uh, they are trying to work with the government uh, on the best way to conserve the uh, government, uh, the habitat. Oh, I forgot one one here as well. Uh, the OPCF, Ocean Park Conservation Foundation, they also did a fantastic job in, in, in dolphin research. So uh, yeah, I really, I don't know where do you guys live? Are you guys from Hong Kong? Are you from somewhere else? Uh, but uh, go to Hoi Ha or Dong Ping Zhou uh, or um, uh, Shui Hou, the place where I, I mentioned the clams. Uh, like I, I was there, uh, I was there two weeks ago and there were like a lot of sandy shore animals, uh, different snails, uh, really, really pretty. Just, just beware where you walk. You don't want to walk on a horseshoe crab. Uh, but it was quite difficult for me. I, I was, I, I think I spent an hour and a half and I only find one uh, horseshoe crab. And if you are interested in diving or snorkeling or, or learning more about the hepatite, you can message us on Facebook or email. Uh, uh, hopefully after this uh, COVID is over, we can all go and explore Hong Kong a bit. Where is the best place to learn or observe biodiversity in Hong Kong? Uh, I mean, to learn, there's a marine biodiversity. Uh, I would, I mean, um, it depends on what kind, marine biodiversity is quite, quite a big, uh, I mean, some, some people are specialized in dolphins, some people are specialized in crabs. Uh, I would like, if you want to observe, uh, the WWF, uh, the Hoi Ha Center is quite good. Uh, the Hoi Ha Center have a, uh, have a glass bottom boat. Uh, you can all, uh, learn about the different animals and they explain uh, to it. Uh, to learn, I think um, there are some, uh, uh, let me share with you, there, there are some um, companies in Hong Kong, they teach the um, uh, marine eco-tourism class uh, uh, where they teach you different animals in depth. Uh, but um, I, I, a lot of that, a lot of those are in Chinese only, so I don't know if you're an English speaker. Uh, they are not that, unfortunately, I think uh, if you are not in a university, uh, there are not that many resources where you can learn uh, marine stuff at, uh, uh, on, uh, online or in person. But uh, there are some really good books by the AFCD out there uh, uh, on the marine biodiversity. Uh, more resources to learn about marine science. Wow, that's a... Uh, that's a very big topic. Um, let me let me share with you this one first. So uh, uh, this is for uh, Alejandra and, and Shimin Him. Uh, this is a, 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 a company in Hong Kong that they do marine biodiversity courses. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, I, I think it's in Chinese only if I'm, if I'm correct. So yes, um, more resources to learn about marine science or biology. Uh, I mean, Net Geo have some really good videos as well. I mean, uh, if you want to learn marine science, Mm, I can recommend some books. Maybe I'll put that in the in the in, in, in the summary email. How do you propose a balance between heritage, eating shark fin, turtle shell soup, drinking horseshoe crab plus, and conservation? Uh, I I I think um, 
I mean, if you ask me, right, I would say don't do any of the above. Don't eat stuff, don't eat turtle shell, shell, don't drink horse food quite a lot. But uh, I understand sometimes you need, you need, you need a compromise um, because like, like the camps, right? So WWF is telling people uh, to only cash a certain size and not asking to not cash at all. So I think they realize it's impossible to, pay, to tell people not fish at all, but rather than to tell them just fish for a certain size. So, yeah, it's always a dilemma. I think I think some people uh, are really stubborn in their way in the fishing. So uh, I think to go from one to zero is difficult. But if you just ask them for a certain size, it might be easier. Um, I mean, uh, as I said in the beginning of the presentation, I think I think uh, the Hong Kong uh, marine environment did in, improve in the last few years. I think that has a lot to do the, with the fishing ban, uh, with the government saying certain months you cannot fish uh, uh, do fishing, it does make a difference. So yes, it's always a dilemma, and that's 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 a dilemma not only in marine biodiversity. That's also in like buildings and everything, uh, or, or culture. How do you preserve something while there's new things happening? Cool. Anybody have any questions? So uh, yes, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, I hope it's informative. I hope you learned something new today. And uh, I will send you the presentation and uh, uh, feel free to share it with your friends uh, uh, and tell them about the wonderful animals we have in Hong Kong. Uh, as I show you with some big stuff, we have some, we have some small invertebrate. Uh, it's really uh, diverse. So thank you, everybody. So have a good night. Have a good night, everybody.